very first instrument I played was a Wurlitzer organ. Organ? Yeah, it was a. Uh, my mother and father had one at the house. At the time, it was this very new, brand new, innovative instrument. And I hated it. it sounded horrible, but I learned, that's how I learned how to play music. And put him in control. You know, I uh, I was a big Kiss fan, and on the back of the Kiss albums, it said Kiss use Gibson guitars and Pearl drums because they want the best, which I now know is an endorsement. But I saw that and I go, well, if they play it, then I must have a Gibson. So I I, uh, I saw a Gibson bass came up for sale in the local newspaper. And so I begged my mother to go buy it. It was like $150, which is very cheap, you know? Yeah. But uh, I got it. It was a Gibson EBO. And I got it and I started playing. And it didn't sound that good. It, it is not a good sounding bass. Now I've learned many of my favorite albums were actually recorded with a uh, Gibson EBO. The, Tom Scholes in Boston, he played that Gibson EBO on the Boston records. Bob Daisley recorded the first two Ozzy records yeah. with the uh, Gibson EBO. Okay. So maybe I should have kept it <laughs> because I didn't know it was going to be this iconic uh, bass. But that was my very first instrument that I got, yeah. The first one I bought was uh, Bachman Turner Overdrive, Not Fragile. And then right around the same time, I got Kiss Destroyer. Yeah. And for Christmas, I got Queen, A Night at the Opera. Kind of like Bing Bing Bing. So right at the same time, you know. Uh, do you still have it? No. <laughs> I, you know, I don't know. It was in cassette. It was oh, in cassette. Okay. Because that Wurlitzer organ that we had yeah. had a cassette player in it. Oh. Which was like, cassette was way ahead of its time. And uh, I would have to look back at my mother's house to see if it's still there, but I doubt it. I don't think so. We dance like the first, very first one ever, I think probably the very first one ever was, um, I was upstairs, I lived downstairs, and, I, and he lived upstairs and went upstairs to his apartment. He had two Marshall half stacks and his BC Rich guitar and he played, um, he was working on uh, the song Megadeth which would become Set the World Afire. Yeah. Um, that's uh, what would become Devil's Island and uh, Looking Down the Cross. So when I started to play with him, <coughs> probably Looking Down the Cross may be the very first one because it had this intro bass, da da bum bum ba da da you know, that, that bass intro, you know, the band intro part that uh, was kind of defined by the bass. So, probably that one was the first one. Well, you know, it's interesting to read. We all, there were two records we always wanted to remix. One was Killing Is My Business, which yeah. we did in 2001 with Bill Kennedy. Yeah. Um, and we remixed and actually kind of really went in and, and even fixed some drums and some things that were just <clears throat> performances that um, we wanted to improve, you know. So that was the first one. The other one was So Far So Good So What? <clears throat> because that record, uh, I think the mix, you no, know, it was 1988 and the style of music was this kind of big, uh, you know, Dokken, Rat, you know, these big kind of high dollar, very glossy sounding records. And I love Michael Wagner's work. I mean, he, he mixed the Master of Puppets record, um, obviously with James and Lars there because it's a very tight, dry sounding record on a very good way. Um, and so we used Michael, but um, I think the sound of that record was too slick and too glossy. We actually had a mix with Paul Lanny, which yeah. you now hear those mixes, and it was very dry, too much. We went with Michael Wagner, it was very wet and open, too much. <laughs> so I think what Dave did with the remixes is he brought it in the middle where it sounds good. And I think overall on all of the uh, records, uh, the one thing I compliment I get is everyone says, man, your bass sounds great on <laughs> all of the remixes. So uh, maybe that's one of the upsides to the, all of the remixes is, is it brought out some qualities that maybe weren't, that you couldn't hear as well before. Three, 
Um, yeah. I'd say probably P Cells was a very definitive record. Um, <clears throat> probably um, Rust in Peace, just because it's a historical yeah. record. And then maybe Countdown to Extinction. Um, just because that was a big turning point for when, if you're, say if you are not a heavy metal fan, but you want to hear Megadeth, Countdown to Extinction is that good record. At the same time, Super Collider is very much like that. Yeah. Super, if you are not a heavy metal fan, but want to hear Megadeth, and maybe not be offended by it, <laughs> like Killing Is My Business would probably <laughs> offend you, yeah. uh, which is kind of the charm of the record. Uh, Super Collider is probably another one of those records that's very broad, has thrash metal, kind of mainstream metal, and uh, very kind of popular melodic music as well. Well, I don't know, that's a tough one. I mean, for singers, you know, it's funny, we did a little bit of that on Super Collider yeah. when we had David Draymond come in, who's, you know, a good friend of ours now. Um, you know, I don't know, that's a tough one. Um, you know, a guy who I always like how he plays is Slash. And I, buddy, me and Dave were friends with Slash and uh, still are, but, you know, played, you know, just kind of jam with him years ago. Uh, and, and he has a very distinctive style of how he plays. Um, similar maybe to Dave, very kind of rock and roll, very passionate kind of yeah. playing. Uh, that might be kind of interesting, <laughs> having him come in and play. Uh, we actually played a show with him a couple of months ago and it was great to yeah. share the stage with him. And uh, He would probably be, be fun maybe to have him guest on a, on a track, just a solo, you know. Well, we have, jeez, uh, you know, there are fans that run up on stage and, you know, as we're playing, they come up and they hug us, you know, or, you know, not so much anymore, but years <laughs> ago, it was crazy, you know, I, I tell you what, here's one, you know, we played in um, Killing Is My Business era, right, we played at the Stone in San Francisco, yeah. one of the famous clubs. And we were playing, I remember I had my BC Ridge bass and we were playing uh, Devil's Island, which is all on the E string, almost the whole song. Yeah. And this fan was down front thrashing and he reached up, grabbed the string and pulled it and broke it off my bass. And it was that moment where I really, I honestly for a minute didn't know what to do. <laughs> you know, I was like, I could move it up an octave on the A string and play it, which but not sound good, so I think I looked over, I had, I had a second bass, and um, so I took it off and I grabbed the other one, you know, I didn't have a technician, I was my yeah. own tech, you know, so I grab it myself, <laughs> put it on and keep playing, and um, that was pretty crazy, loco. Okay. Uh, I, I do collect memorabilia, I don't have one of every t-shirt, I wish I did, yeah. Uh, over the years, but I have a lot, and I have I try to get stuff from every tour that we do. Um, you know, we try to do that for ourselves. Let everybody grab a T-shirt, sweatshirt, and stuff, so that we have some things from memories. Because I have a, a box at home <clears throat> that has tour programs from Cryptic Writings, Riss, Don Castle Donnington, 1988. Yeah. Uh, I have some shorts from the Australia <laughs> tour in 1991. Rust in peace. You know, so just cool stuff like that, that sometimes you open the closet, you're like, wow, I didn't even know I had this, you know? So it's, for me, it's even fun to uh, have memory good. I've got some old picks, you know, I've used different types of picks. Dave has always used the yellow yeah. picks, you know, pretty consistent. Um, but now we start changing them, we put different, you know, the Super Collider Tour, 13 Tour, Countdown to Extinction, yeah. those kind of things. So those are kind of cool to collect those. Of course, Willie G has those. Even though he'll tell you he doesn't, we know he does, right? So ask Willie G for the picks. Okay. Well, more and more we're playing those. You know, when we did 20th Anniversary, Rust in Peace, and yeah. Countdown to Extinction, a lot of those, half of those records we never played before. So yeah. we play them now. Um, this year is 25 years of So Far So Good So What. Yeah. Um, and even though we've played every song from that record at some point live, it would be cool to maybe bring out one or two of those 
that we haven't played in many, many years to play. Um, I'm personally kind of aching to play a couple of things off Killing Is My Business. You know, I, I did, me and Sean have fun with those. We'll sit in the rehearsal room at, at the show and start playing Chosen Ones or, you know, something like that. So it'd be fun to go back and maybe pull one of those one of those songs out. Of course, we have Euthanasia coming up and there's a lot of songs from that record we never played. Addicted to Chaos is one that I it's like. Great, great. Song. I wish that song would have been a single. It, it wasn't, you know, we did Train of Consequences, uh, to Le Mans and then Reckoning Day. Yeah. And, uh, but I love, personally, just as a, I'm a fan of that song. I like it. Every time I hear Addicted to Chaos, it's, it's one of my favorite ones yeah. on Youth Music. Yeah. Um, you know, I just remember it was kind of dangerous here, you know, for uh, Americans, especially from the United States, to come down here. So we. We went to our hotel and they said, don't leave. <laughs> so we stayed in the hotel, <laughs> we drove to Soundcheck, came back, we went to the concert, came back, and then that was it, you know. But uh, I remember the concert was, not very many bands had come here. And we were one of the early bands. And uh, so that's always fun when you go to a country um, first, you know, before most other bands come. You, you really get the spirit of the people and um, it was obvious we have a lot of fans down here in Columbia, so it's it's nice now coming back all these years later to be visiting. I mean, every one of them has been different. You know, that first one, as dangerous as it was, it was special. You know, um, the ones since then, you know, like to be able to go to uh, Medellin uh, and to you know, play out in you know into another another areas of Colombia was yeah. very cool for us. That was uh, as a tourist, it's fun. Uh, it's fun to see that there's fans in other cities besides just the main you know capital and and you know type of cities like that. And so I'm happy we did that in Colombia. We've done it a little bit in Argentina, a lot in Brazil. Um, uh, but like Chile, for instance, we've only played Santiago. Yeah. So it's cool that Colombia, we were able to spread out a little bit. And, and so that probably to me is, is the thing I like the most, is to move out into other towns within a, a nation. Symphony of Destruction is always great. Yeah. Fun to play live. Um, Addicted to Chaos is definitely one of my others. Um, I like Looking Down the Cross and Mary Jane. Is that four? Yeah. Uh, so five. Um, and I, you know what, I, I really, I like Kingmaker. You know, it's one of the songs recently that to me has a very vintage uh, Megadeth rhythm pattern to it. That when you hear it, to me, that, that is a sound that I fell in love with early on when I first met Dave and he was starting to play his songs and even his sound when he was in Metallica, that yeah. very distinctive rhythm guitar tone that is very original to, uh, it's become very original for Megadeth. So it kind of reminds me a little bit of like Mechanics, or something like that, yeah. so favorite of mine. Sleepwalker? No, that's it's not, not a, a, a no. Scissorsville. See, I didn't play on those records, so I don't know. Yeah. I was thinking I of know. United Abomination. I know. Uh, <laughs> Sleepwalker for that one. Yeah. System has failed. Um, Let's kick the chair. Uh, yeah, no, no. I, kick the chair probably is my favorite off that one. You know, that that dead enough was cool. Um, Dave was explaining to me the history of that song, you know, of why he wrote that, so that was kind of cool. But yeah, kick the chair is probably one of the. I remember when here for sharing that song it was very much like classic early Megadeth, you know. Yeah. Uh, your favorite from uh, in game? Uh, bodies. Bodies is cool. Good. Yeah, I like that one. It's good, and um, and also uh, I also like Head Crusher. Yeah, it's cool. That's kind of hard. Uh, favorite riff? Probably the uh, uh, the beginning, the early riff of uh, Scoba Beneath the Skin. Nah, 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 nah. 
right? <laughs> that one's that one's great. And um, favorite solo? Tour? Solo. Solo. Favorite solo. Um, man, Tornado of Souls is great. One of my true favorites. Solo of Marty. Yes. Yeah. That that's a great one. I mean, Chris Poland, Devil's Island, Jeff Young, um, uh, Hook and Mouth. Uh, for Dave, um, I like Sweating Bullets. Very cool. Um, and uh, Al Petrelli. Um, uh, boy, with him, Promises maybe. Right? Um, and then uh, with Chris, the intro of Burn is great. Yeah. I love to hear him just shred like <laughs> that, you know, it's good. Yeah. Favorite drum in Omega Dead Sun? Favorite drums? Yeah. Well, Reckoning Day is pretty cool. All right. <laughs> hey, you know what's funny? You know where I got that idea from? Is Crocus. Years ago, I saw Crocus play yeah. with, I think, Pat Travers and, and Rainbow. Mm -hmm. And as I understand, the, the bass player in the band, Chris Van Roar, maybe at the time, was first the drummer. Yeah. As I understand. Well, at one point in the show, uh, Chris had some roto toms right next to the drummer, like on the drummer's hi hat side, so down here. And so he went over and they did this drum and bass solo together. Which is funny because later Duff McKagan and Matt Sorum did the same thing. So I wonder <laughs> yeah. if they saw the same concert. But they did this roto top. But that was where I got the idea to come out and play the Reckoning Day thing uh, with Nick, you know, when we when I we used to bring the Tom Tom out. I just yeah. I thought that that dynamic between a bass player and a drummer playing drums together was so cool. And uh, that was years before Crocus ever got popular. <laughs> so, so it was pretty cool to see that. Okay, the last question. Yeah. Favorite video of Mega Video? Versus. Favorite video? Yeah. Um, you know what's funny? I kind of like 99 Ways to Die. It was a, it was, it was, it was, it was a, we just kind of came in, filmed it, and we were out of there. And there's like an energy about it. Yeah. We were on tour. There's a different energy about things when you're on tour and you're really kind of in the groove, you know. So that one, I need to go watch that again. I haven't seen it in a long time, but I, every time I see it, it has an impact to me. I like that one.